<laughs> well, it's obviously a buzz. The fact that um, we're now using droplet digital PCR, a technique which uh, I suppose we pioneered 20 years ago and then gave up for many years. It's only become commercially available very recently. It's a bit of a buzz, you know, when your research work gets recognised. The essence of digital PCR is that you have to perform multiple replicates, some of which are positive and some of which are negative. Droplet digital PCR enables you to do this, to produce the replicates. Each replicate is a droplet. You get 20,000 uh, droplets uh, set up in a few minutes and read in a short time. So it greatly facilitates producing multiple replicates. I'm very, very happy that enables, uh, you know, enables one to answer questions. I just like solving problems, you know. Uh, when, I, when I get the paper in the morning, I do the crossword and I do the sudoku. And uh, I, I like uh, puzzles and problems and finding the answer to these things. I got into haematology because I think um, it's an area where things are quantifiable and you can answer questions because you can measure things which I think is a great thing. Measurement is a, is a great thing, you know. Minimal residual disease is the term that's used for leukaemia that's not detectable by conventional methods, such as looking at the bone marrow, but it's still there. But uh, once the proportion of leukaemic cells drops below that 1%, 1 to 2%, we don't know whether the patient's cured. We don't know, it's a black box. So to follow the effects of treatment and to possibly adjust treatment, you need more sensitive detection. I can still remember the Eureka moment, sitting in a plane as it was taxiing out of Sydney Airport. This was about 1987, and the question came to my mind, what are the specific mutations that could be detectable by PCR? Trying to find the one leukemic cell in a bone marrow sample, which has maybe 100,000 other cells in, it's like you've got 100,000 books, and one of them somehow has a misprint somewhere in it. A word is changed from a sensible word to a nonsense word. And you're basically trying to count the number of got, that have got the misprint in your total print run. That's similar to finding the number of leukemic cells inside a bone marrow sample. The principle of limiting dilution is to uh, enable you to quantify the number of targets that you have in a sample. The, the key ideas actually um, started out even before we became involved with PCR. We developed um, methods based on uh, cloning lymphocytes and using uh, genetic markers so that we could identify leukemic clones and this was based on cell culture. The way that the number of clones are distributed um, conforms to what's termed the Poisson distribution, which is really the distribution that describes gen rare events. So that was one strand. Limiting dilution cloning used Poisson statistics. The other strand was uh, detecting um, uh, immunoglobulin T cell receptor rearrangements by a PCR. And so we took the quantification method from lymphocyte cloning, limiting dilution, and instead of cloning um, a cell in a well of a microplate, we cloned a molecule in a tube of a PCR. Pam Sykes was the lead author in the paper. 
I think uh, her input was uh, largely intellectual. Um, Mike was particularly involved in the gene rearrangements. Sim was heavily involved in actual experimentation, although Mike did some as well. It was a fairly laborious uh, thing to do to do umpteen dilutions uh, manually of uh, samples, check every single uh, interaction between the uh, uh, leukemic uh, primers. We then separated the um, where we ran gels and set it up at uh, the other end of the building in uh, a clean room because of the fear of uh, contamination. This work we were doing around, around 1990, a couple of years either side of that, and PCR was a fairly new technique by then. So the samples would all be put on gels, gel would run, we'd stain them with ethidium bromide, and then we'd have to go down a level to the dark room and take Polaroid pictures of them. Droplet digital PCR essentially does what uh, Sim and Mike used to do manually. Each uh, droplet contains a PCR reaction, so each uh, droplet uh, is read for positivity or negativity, positive fluorescence or non-positive fluorescence. Uh, instead of 25 laboriously performed setting up and electrophoresis, you get 10 to 20,000 uh, droplets uh, set up in a few minutes and read in a short time. And then you have the standard PCR in the middle. It strikes me as a very good way of doing it, this idea that you'd split something up into droplets and you'd then basically put them through a fax machine. Because you can look at tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of droplets in an automated way. For us to get that information, we would have been here for months. Oh, look, we were going through an exciting time generally. We were going through a very exciting time. We felt that this was potentially useful as a general quantification method. Uh, so we published this paper in Biotechnics in 1992. And we did, I think, quite one quite important study, which, is pub which was published in 1994 in The Lancet, in which we were able to uh, predict outcome of patients, of children, with acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia by looking at the uh, bone marrow uh, after one month of treatment. That the education session of the American Society of Hematology a year or two later, the person who's giving the education session said that if this is confirmed, it's going to be, uh, it's going to change the way we uh, treat leukemia. Um, and it was confirmed. We actually have a, a spin-out company to Monoquant. That's where the droplet digital PCR system comes in. The question we're really trying to answer is whether using DNA as the target for quantifying the BCR able translocation and thus monitoring chronic myeloid leukemia, whether that will be an improvement against using RT-PCR. And we hope that a drop the digital PCR will enable us to provide a more precise uh, quantification and enable us to further answer that question. When one uses DNA as the starting material, you basically have different uh, primers for different patients and they may vary in efficiency. So droplet digital PCR is less affected by variations in uh, amplification efficiency. In choosing bet between different instruments, one really needs to look at what one's specific needs are. The, the BioRed was, uh, it, it does what we want at, at the level of sensitivity that we need, and it's quick. So it was, a, it was the obvious choice. Einstein said that God, God doesn't play dice with us, you know. The answers are all there. It's up to us to formulate the questions. Once you formulate the questions, nearly always the answers are obvious and that, that's the easy part.
That's why I like technology, because it helps you answer something. Formulate the question and then go and get the piece of technology that will enable you to answer it.